And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a newcomer to the temple. One part of the double-headed monster creating spirits ancient tales, which we will be getting into t tonight. Better, or better known as Sat. How appropriate that I'm doing this, that we're doing this on a Saturday. Well, pretty, pretty, pretty good, actually. The one and only Jose Luis Lopez Galindo. I'm yep, hoping I got it. everything right. Yeah, well, it's good enough. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Because I'm not, I'm not going to try and do an accent. Nah, no, nah, <laughs> don't even try. It, it, that would be definitely worse. Yeah. Uh, so... First off, how are you doing tonight? And well, today for me, tonight for you. <laughs> well, actually, pretty good. I was like, we we kind of have a, a session uh, in play just when we well before this one, like mm -hmm. one hour ago. So can't complain about it. Mm -hmm. How about you? I, I'm do, I'm doing all right. There's plenty there's plenty of snow on the ground, which means plenty of ammo for me. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> I won't get near. Uh, yes. But, Especially since I I was all, during snowball fights, I was all I was I was that jerk who would get creative by by sneaking by sneaking in say frozen peas or carrots in, into the into the snowball. <laughs> oh, that that's 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 creative. Yeah, <laughs> to, to say uh, that least, that's creative. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, sometime. Um, I think I think the worst of it was when I set was the whole thing where I got a bunch of lunch trays, filled them up with snow, and then laid them out over around someone's bed so that as soon as they step out of bed, they're stepping in snow. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, yeah, definitely you're a creative one. <laughs> oh. Actually, here there's not much snow, so I don't think I could ever think about that. <laughs> no. Uh, and. Yeah, some films use some films use fake snow, but it's but it's not the same. Nah, definitely not. Uh, but I'd like to open with the humble beginnings, in a sense. Mm -hmm. So, walk me through your first introduction to role playing games and what made it stick. Okay, so well, I am what most people would consider a geek. Like mm -hmm. I'm not. Well, even though I well don't look that kind of well, let's talk about stereotypes. I don't I don't look like a like a geek, but I've always been like playing video games. I loved uh, RPGs in growing up. I, well, I grew up in the '90s, so Pokemon was like the big thing, mm -hmm. and well, that stick to me since forever. So. Uh, tabletop uh, RPG games were kind of the next step, and once I was in university, uh, well, first year, uh, just getting completely lost in in subjects and things, I was like with with my, one of my friends, and he was like, "Hey, do you like uh, RPG games?" And he and I was like, "I've never tried, but fuck it, why not?" Mm -hmm. And uh, I started playing Vampire: The Masquerade, and uh, Kind of liked it, uh, stopped because the, the, the kind of thing that you play three or four sessions and then it dies out. Mm -hmm. So after that, uh, the other creator, Mario, uh, we play basketball together. And we uh, once we were just running around, he was like, hey, do you like the same the same, the same same uh, question? And I started playing D&D after that. So from that point on, I was like, well, this is kind of cool. Fuck it. Let's, let's go for it. I... I kind of uh, make all my friends uh, fans, and I have a really nice group. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> would when it, I um now I w I will admit that I I'm while well, I'm not well, I'm not going to call myself an expert. I'm no I'm no stranger to some aspects of the um, RPG scene in Spain. There's a ha there's a hand there's a short list of get. Of games over there that haven't been translated yet that I, that I'm hoping to tr that I'm hoping to dig into one of these days, um, mm -hmm. a couple of them being, um, Black Sword and Walker. Actually, I don't know the, those ones. Um, Not gonna lie. 
Black Sword, Black Sword is Black Sword or Espada Negra um, mm -hmm. is far is far more is far more sword and sorcery. Um, I've had I've had some people sell it to me as not as being not too far removed from um, from th from things like Riddle of Steel, which I'll have to I'll have to be the judge of that when the time comes and. Of course, one of the one of the bigger ones that kept get that kept getting brought up to me is Aquilare. Ah, the yeah, I I I actually knew this one. It's based on the medieval Spain with the witches and hacks on the on the north, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely know that one. I haven't played it actually, but yeah, I know I know it. Yeah, I I'm probably gonna end up covering it sometime later this year. I do. I do know enough to know that it that transferring over transferring over to it won't be too difficult because I believe it's using the framework of basic role playing. Yeah, usually it's the is the easiest way possible to go when you create a game. Well, what I mean by basic role playing is the the D100 system that's used in um, Call of Cthulhu and RuneQuest. Mm-hmm. Uh, Haven't and... tried Call of Cthulhu yet, actually, but I I, I kind of want to go into it. Mm -hmm. Um, but now when it, that brings me to Spirits Ancient Tales, was this some, sometimes ga sometimes games end up being developed as a hack of other games that just evolved into a life of their own, and sometimes it's an idea that was nagging at somebody. What can you tell me about how Spirits Ancient Tales came to be? Well. Uh, I was. Uh, I remember that that time when Mario Mario probably was like uh, thinking about it. He was the the, the one that had the idea, mm -hmm. the first idea about it, and uh, he was like thinking about it. And I I tend to be the the kind of person that when I get into some kind of thing like uh, Dungeons and Dragons, uh, Pokemon, I, I kind of want to do it like in a almost. Uh, uh, I, I want to dig into into all all of the lore, the the information. I try to find uh, everything I can about it. So as um, as he he thought about me, and, now, and he called me like, "Hey, how about we create a TTRPG game?" And I was like, "Well, that's that's crazy. I'm I'm just about to go into an exam, but well, tell me more." And well, he had this idea about well the basic lore of the game like that. How about if we make an, a an spirit that can uh, possess an adventure? And then, well, we we both played uh, Vampire the Masquerade and D&D, &D, and mm -hmm. he liked some things about the vampires, some things about D&D, &D, and he ended up like, well, if we take this, but we give it a swirl, how, how would it end? Mm -hmm. And that's the main the main thing that happened, like, for example, we from Vampire, he really, 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 really liked the way that uh, I don't know if you ever played it, but he has like this has like a, the way you you act and the way you your nature is. Yeah, so that that's something that he really liked about Vampire because that made you like it, it gives you enough uh, freedom so that you get uh, the role playing ability to just go with it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it gives you like some ideas or maybe even guidelines to how you should role play that that character. Yeah. So uh, talking about that, we we were like we spent. Well, it's been this project's already been like. Yeah, it's gonna make about one year from now. Yeah, actually one year. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I st I finished my exams and we started working on the project. That's it. It was his idea, but ended up being like kind of a weird uh, child between the two the two of us. Mm -hmm. And given given the importance of spirits in the game in the game, um, mm -hmm. when it when it comes to the, when it comes to spirit creation, um. Is it going? Is it going to be a case where where there's going to where there's going to be um, the where there's going to be like two character sheets, one for the spirit and another and another one for the adventures that they possess? Yes, that's the main. Well, the main thing about the character sheet is that is composed of two of two sheets of paper. First sheet is about the adventurer they are possessing right now, which can be swapped 
non lore it it is because sometimes well i don't know if you uh, if you play now but mm -hmm. uh you know this feeling when you've been playing the same character for let's say 10 20 sessions mm -hmm. and uh that character gets like not boring but it's like i really want to try something new with the with abilities and uh in and so we designed this so that the the adventurer part can be swapped without actually changing the ability of roleplay like you will roleplay the adventurer that but you are the 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 spirit so as the adventurer can change his personality conduct and even goals uh, the spirit will still have uh, some goals that can only be met if they are aligned with the uh, the adventurer so yeah it's literally that we have one sheet one sheet that goes for the uh for the spirit and the other one that goes for the adventurer as uh well anyone can see in the kickstarter we have a a sample of the page oh, yeah now with that since you guys have mentioned a um World of Dar World of Darkness by extension. I know you specifically brought up vampire. Yeah, but... specifically vampire, but yeah. I'm cu I'm curious. I'm curious if you guys plan on um, doing a archetype system when it comes to spirit creation. Not necessarily a class, but archetypes in the same way. Yeah, that... there's there are archetypes like the well. Right now we have five uh, different types of spirits. We plan to do more and mm -hmm. well, if uh, we get if we if we could pull this off, maybe even like have a way to make like a custom spirit yeah uh but the thing is about the thing about the spirits is like uh every, each spirit uh represents the way an adventurer uh well a creature died it, as it makes it you you make the the well there's the right now if you check the well, our files you will see mm -hmm. that there that there are spirits that for every single uh player that we have and well as we have the the vanished which is a spirit that uh well ended up well it, it modern archetypes mm -hmm. the spirits uh, get some abilities which can be used in the spiritual plane in and well there's three three types of planes and each spirit has different abilities mm -hmm. it's more than an archetype right now is that you choose the spirit that best align with the idea of character you have if you want to play a wizard, you can or you can go for a magic spirit. If you want to play like uh, some sort of ranger archetype, because there's no actual ranger, like but the ranger archetype, you could go for a nature spirit. So right now, we, what we have is like uh, I think there's five right now, five samples of spirits that you can choose and get the one that will align better. Then you choose from that spirit uh, his past life. Mm -hmm. I mean the way the the way the adventurer or creature died, and then become that spirit. So basically, that's the the, the main uh, mechanic on spirits that you choose the way the the what well, the character uh, died, and then uh, it possessed an adventurer. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes when it comes to the, when it comes. To um, to character, to characters and advancement, um, and this is the reason why I asked about the whole archetype thing. Are you go Are you going relatively freeform in terms of how in terms of how ca how characters and adventurers can advance, or is it a case where spirits are freeform and adventurers are a bit more restricted? No, actually, uh, our main idea with this uh, with this project was that. We were able to create two characters which are, uh, serve the same class. Mm -hmm. However, they would be completely different. Uh, by that, we I mean we have like a more of a uh, ability map mm -hmm. uh, way of progressing. Just like most uh, Final Fantasies or some RPGs, which allows you to just pick the abilities you think best suit the character. For example, uh, the hitman we have uh, prepared it makes the 
uh, there's like three archetypes, not really archetypes, but three ways of understanding the the hitman. Mm -hmm. Would be like the assassin one, the one that has a mastermind, and the one that ha that that works with as a, as a thief, mm -hmm. serving this uh, this class as the typical um, what's the name. Uh, Ah, uh, the one that goes with stealth and mm -hmm. uh, knives and well, the typical in the city that you would yeah. find. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can actually create a hitman that works uh, as a poisoner, and, and and another hitman in the same in the same party would could would be the ability just to be a, a mastermind, mm -hmm. and they would be completely different. The spreads of the stats would be completely different, but they are the same class. And plus, we have the ability to kind of multi-class and take abilities from other from other classes. However, this would cost a little bit more in terms of ability points, which is what we do. We just give some ability points when then the players choose what they spend it on. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of restricted in the in a way that if you start as a hitman, it's going to cost you more to. Uh, upgrade or uh, uh, progress as a as a warrior. However, in between the in between the classes, you definitely uh, can go go nuts with the with the abilities. Mm -hmm. now, Actually, if I had to if I, if I had to pick right now, I guess well, by by the standards we have right now created, the spirits are even a little bit more restricted than the classes. Mm -hmm. Which that bring that given given that and given the fact that it looks like you are looks like you guys are using a um a sk a bit of a skill system. Mm-hmm. Um Do you got do you guys have a do you guys have a large amount a large amount of skills or did you try and keep the skill list a bit small a bit smaller compared to those that have giant skill lists and a bit of analysis paralysis? Not just well, we have. Uh, it depends on the on the uh, on the class, obviously, because some classes will have more skills that cost less, but m uh, other class will have less skills that cost cost more. Usually, the one that costs more are either or more useful or gives you a better buff or, mm -hmm. well, the usual thing in a in a game. Yeah. So, uh, our idea with this is that every single subclass, to, uh, it would would only spend 20 ability points to get all the skills from that from that class so that subclass however of course you can take one ability from one subclass you can take another ability from another subclass you just uh, go with the with the flow kind of what the character asks in every moment like if you find yourself that your hitman which you were thinking of making it more of a poisoner gets the ability gets to be the like the main voice of the of the party and becomes like that's this kind of the, the planner of the of the things can take some some abilities of mastermind if he feels like that's what his character would do mm -hmm. so it has a it has uh we keep it simple in in the way that there is not like an a subclass that has 20 at one point uh ability like but uh, every subclass, if you have 20 points, basically you can buy the whole subclass. Mm -hmm. Plus, we made like uh, uh, some abilities that can be chosen in independently of the class of the subclass. Like, for example, uh, the kind of uh, equipment they, they are able to take. We take. Uh, I, I always thought when I played Dungeons and Dragons and things that they give you the ability to use every single weapon in the game like when they say no you are um uh, you're able to use uh, all martial weapons mm -hmm. and i was like uh, if i'm a warrior i've probably spent my years training in my sword my axe my hammer but if you give me a a, a lance it wouldn't be it wouldn't make that much sense that i'm just as good as i am with the weapon i use every single day of my life yeah and so we kind of got got that we make like this uh, uh, preferred equipment, which would cost less. Would you, everyone can access that that equipment, but 
it would cost less if that class asked for it. Like, for example, the Hitman has the, the preferred equipment of knives, uh, um, a crossbow, uh, even some kits. And with that, with that in mi with that in mind, it is funny that you bring that that bring that every weapon kind of thing because when you when you think about it, whether whether it be in whether it be in tabletop or or otherwise, just because you have just because you have this big variety of poten of potential equipment, there the equipment that people are actually going to use is going to be smaller. In the case of say exactly. a fighter. They're they're gonna they're probably gonna pick one particular style of equipping their character and stick to that for their whole career. Um, you look at you look at certain shooters, and while some of them may have a long long list of potential uh, potential firearms you could use, the ones that people actually end up using is significantly smaller. Yeah, that's something that we keep in mind too, because uh, well, we played kind of a lot of D and D, and it was like. Yeah, but if I create, a, let's say, a fighter which is a swordsman, it doesn't make sense that he's carrying just two axes in the back and he's able to use a lance if he finds it and he's able to just go for, for, go for a, a, um, a ranged weapon or something. It's, so if you actually want to use a weapon, you have to spend uh, some ability points to get the mm -hmm. ability to use it. And that is where we... well. Every single class can access every single weapon, but some classes uh, have to have it cheaper to have to get some weapons. Mm -hmm. And with the, given the give, is it a case where to where develop where developing developing some uh, that whole variable cost thing? In a weird mm -hmm. in a weird roundabout way, I ended up getting reminded of, well, oddly enough, another another. Another TTRPG from Spain that I've de that I've spent way too much time with, and that's Anima. Actually, I don't know that one either. I I'm not really into into TTRPG from Spain. Um, the full name you is know more Anima about them than me. The full name is Anima Beyond Fantasy. I'm actually gonna look that up. Um, it's it's technically out of print right no right now. But it, but it's gonna, but it's supposed to be making a comeback. It started, it st it, it it started out as a hack of Rollmaster and then kind of went into its own thing. Mm -hmm. um, I see. Now, given the, given that, and given the given the cost thing that you mentioned when it came to when it came to skills, mm -hmm. would it be fair of me to say that you guys are aiming for a? XP as currency thing instead of a level based approach. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's uh, it's uh, our main idea is to get uh, the abilities by spending ability points on them. Not not like if you were like not like leveling up. Like well, spirits kind of go that way because uh, spirits can only level up as they uh, kind of eat other spirits, which is uh, the the main thing about. Or our game is that the uh, the only way, well, the only way uh, a spirit would die if is if he lost a, a spiritual battle with other spirits, mm -hmm. which are relatively common in the in the setting of Sat. So uh, the way that uh, we grow as a, an adventurer is basically and uh, no and it's is basically the ability of the master when you end the session gives you. A number of ability points which you can spend on uh, being able to use other weapons, uh, the skill that you need to get like five feet more movement, or even the skill that get, that gives you your, your subclass. Mm -hmm. and However, now... the, the the spirits does go with a with a level, mm -hmm. let's say. Now, with that in, with that in mind, I'd like to get into combat. Um, mm -hmm. Now, of course, the world of darkness is no is notorious for having characters that are a bit squishy. Yes. Not, a not as squishy as some as some other games I could refer to, Traveler, but certainly on the squishy end of things. Yeah, definitely. Uh, which is wh which is why which is why I think in something like World of Darkness you have multiple chances to mitigate damage. Yes, uh, in set. Uh, we still have the 
HP bar thing. Mm -hmm. We then go for the vampire kind of uh, cage blocks. Like it's like small. Well, you have like seven uh, uh, in your points or something like. That. Well, I don't know how to translate it exactly. Um, but I when it comes to those kind of systems, that it the approach that I have have is have is very simple. If it's a if it's a pool if it's a pool that get that gets whittled down as you take damage, then that then that counts as hit points. If it's a if it's a resource with escalating penalties as you take damage, that's wounds. No, it's the is the HP pool thing mm -hmm. because we thought well we started with the with the idea of trying to make like the wounds type of of damage, but. We ended up uh, saying no to it because we thought that if we are going to make it, it well, it can be this. This uh, game is supposed to be, uh, you know, um, versatile enough that you will be able to find uh, a person that likes social interaction will be able to do uh, just as much as, as someone that likes combat if you have a good master, obviously. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, we ended up describing the idea of the wound type and going for the, the HP pool because we thought it was like the best idea for mm. it. And, and well, basically on that note, it, we went like we have like two pools with the, the power points and the which is kind of a mana thing. We with, there's in all the games and uh, the HP the HP pool in general the 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 HP pool will be wheeled down as you said. When someone damages you, hits you with a with a weapon, and by the by the standards of our game, the armor does not allow you not to get hit, more like mitigate the hit you're you're taking. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's more uh, we our idea was more like if you want to not get hit, you have to try not to get hit, not just wear an armor that will give you. A lot of a lot of uh, protection. Mm -hmm. now, so as you said about, about yeah. mitigating, what what you said about mitigate, mitigating damage. Mm -hmm. Now, with that in with that in mind, um, what are you guys using as far as your core die mechanic? Um, are you get? Because I see mul I see multiple die types in the thing. Are you? Yeah, it, there's like well, uh, or. Um, it depends on what you're on what you're ask, ask, uh, it, it depends on what you're asking. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about the skill checks, abilities, and uh, the typical things, you just uh, the die uh, between one d four and one d twenty, and it can go uh, beyond from a Titanic die, which is what we had like the uh, what the hundred. Mm -hmm. But those abilities are just reserved for like high, high, like over the top level mm -hmm. level quests. So uh, for that, for that things like let's say you try to well, the typical thing you're trying to see if someone is lying to you, you just go for a for an inside check and it would go if if you have a d4, you would be you would roll a d4 if you have a d6, well, just and so on. Mm -hmm. However, we have this uh, special special uh, to be a specialist, mm -hmm. which means that you may not be that great in, for example, wisdom checks. However, you're especially good in let's say insight mm -hmm. so even even when you have well if you are really bad let's say you have a d4 the uh, being a specialist will would allow you to have add always the half of the maximum die so if it's a d4 you have two mm -hmm. if it's a d6 you have three if you d20 you have 10 mm -hmm. and that allows you to have like a minimum point that you would get anyway so it's like you are definitely better, and you can do more things, even though you are not that great at that at that ability specifically. Mm -hmm. Which I think we that, that helps because, uh, well, referring back to some other uh, TTRPGs, for example, D and D, uh, what we didn't well, what what we didn't like that much is that, even though someone does not doesn't know anything about, let's say, history, has a, 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 a minus one penalty. Mm -hmm. If he rolls well, he might get like a 19, which definitely would come as a great, uh, well, a, a difficult task to fulfill. Mm -hmm. So here we said, we said like, if you 
have never studied history and he asks you about something that happened like 1,000 years, years ago, you're definitely not going to get it. However, if you are decent in intelligence, you might be able to get it. And if you are a specialist in intelligence, you, you wouldn't need, for example, if the, if the difficulty is, let's say, 15, mm -hmm. if you have a D4, it's definitely you're not going to get it. But if you are like a D20, you have a 75% chance of failing. However, let's say you have a D12, but you're a specialist in in history. You would just need to roll over a, a seven, which is basically the same idea. As like if he, he might be smarter, but you are a specialist in that matter. So it allows you to, even though it's a, the same role, it's the same, well, the same difficulty, mm -hmm. you might be able to do it, even though you're not that great as, as the other guy, Yeah, which I think it was a really nice touch in, in our part. Mm -hmm. And if you are talking about combat uh, related things, you we just use the D100 and well modifiers on depending on the weapon mm -hmm. would be would be used. Like for example, if you go for a rapier, you would you would be able to uh, to throw the D100 and roll uh, the, your dexterity die. Those two will, would add, and the result would. Uh, indicate what what you would have as uh, as as the as as if you hit or not mm -hmm. we have three t three kinds of of results in that in that case it's a miss mm -hmm. if you roll under the the miss part would become would we consider a miss and you just like well the dagger uh, bounced off the armor mm -hmm. the 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 axe didn't hit the the target mm -hmm. if you get uh, in between the the two second well the miss and the blunt hit you would end up with a blunt hit that means uh the die you of the of the of the weapon would be a uh, minimum you just you don't have to roll it it's just like well you got uh if you if you make like let's say 2d4 and 2d6 you just make four damage mm -hmm. and uh well if you get in between blunt and uh the the um, the success uh, hit well mm -hmm. you hit you roll a die as much damage as it rolled and if you roll over the the hit uh, mark you would get a critical hit which will maximize one of the die which mm -hmm. it makes it good but it doesn't make it amazing like if, well thinking about it most of the weapons are uh, in ranges from uh, zero to ninety nine. To have the crit, miss, and and blunt hit, and le if you think about it, when you get a d20, for example, in the in your strength, and you try to throw a a d100, the probability of having more than 90 is almost like a 16 percent or something like that. So it makes it easier to have a crit, but it makes it less powerful to have a crit. Yeah. Now. That I do, I do certainly appreciate that because, as much as 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 much as fun as certain crits could be, crits could also result in a bit of um, spikiness in some games. Yeah, definitely. So, if you think about well, thinking about it, D and D, if you double the die of the damage, and, and it's like you can just go go to town with it. It's like a lot of damage. I don't mind. I don't mind. Dub, I don't mind say doubling the de doubling the die that you roll that you roll, per se, because there's still there's still leeway. There is not a it's not a guaranteed spike. But yeah, I'm, definitely. I'm but more talking. Well, I'm more talking about cases like that. where the total is doubled. Ah, yeah, definitely. That that can result when when you have situations like that, you can you can run into incidents where somebody is doing middling amounts of damage, and then all of a sudden they just one shot you. Yeah, I agree with that. That makes it like we made the combat so that, yeah, you can actually get a crit, but it's not like a crit is going to definitely kill the big bad evil dude. Like we ha we all have this idea, this story of being playing and he, the the DM gets this big bad evil dude, like really really powerful and things, and then that the, the adventurers just crit him twice and it's it's gone. Mm -hmm. Now. With that in with that in mind, when it comes to when it, com when it comes to the set when it comes to um when it comes to combat, mm -hmm. 
something else something else I'm curious about is do you guys plan on having a are you guys doing an action point system or do you have do you, or do you have a bit more simplified approach? Uh we um you mean action point in in like a bonus action, you have your main action and then something like a reaction. That's what you mean. Yeah, some some games will do it like that. Some games will have some games will have tiers of will have um, tiers of actions like st standard, move, free, so and so on. And some yeah, we will have, we have that. Well, we kind of have that idea with, because we got like the more of a just um, the the easy way. Like you you the each turn is six seconds. That's it's usually in every single game, mm -hmm. and uh, you have one action which is the main action of your turn you can take the attack action you can search for something and uh you have then a fast action which is uh, something that you can do fast so, well it as it as it stands like for example open a door or interacting with something that is not as complex or even after that you have an extra action like it's like it's like a, 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 a something that would only be allowed for center, certain classes or some certain skills from certain, certain classes and then there's the the reaction that as something happens, it, it you can do something about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the last one, we have obvious, obviously we have to take the the cry action. It's always a free action. You can do it whenever you want. You can cry, just easy. Mm -hmm. And and with that in mind, what are you guys shooting for as far as <clears throat> as far as the total page count for the for the project? Uh, right now we have almost 200 pages of content in the in the book, if I recall correctly. Mm -hmm. I didn't check. We got well, didn't check uh, for let's say a month or so because we we were writing the the whole book. Mm -hmm. And uh, by now I believe it's like yeah, like around 100 to well, 150 to 200 pages, mm -hmm. because right now in the book we don't have the book like let's say uh, beautifully written and we have like a doc in in Google <laughs> that that will make us uh, we will try to make it beautiful after that and right now in the in the in the book there's actually 100 pages but there are uh, things that we didn't put in still in the book like we have the ability trees of each uh, class is written in docs in docs uh, different docs it would be I would say, uh, in the it would end up being uh, around uh, the one fifty to two hundred mark. Yeah. Now, that I'd be remiss if I didn't ask about magic. Uh, obviously, magic is the main reason we all play these games because <laughs> it's, um, it's the idea. You're going on a fantasy setting. You're not gonna have magic. Obviously, we do have magic. Well, you can. There is. There are. There are high and low magic set setups, but. And and of course no and of course um no ma no magic system is going to be the same twice, um mm -hmm. and so and some of them are better than mm -hmm. others, and some of them are worse than others. Looking at you, Monty Cook. <laughs> <laughs> but when it comes to when it comes to casting, is is that treated as uh, as a tr as a tree like o like other things are? Yep, it's it is. However, uh, wizards are, well, depending on the class, uh, it will become different. As we thought that magic should be used in a more creative way than the way most of the games treat it. Like, you get these spells, these spells do this, and you can't move from that. It allows for a lot of creativity, but we thought it wasn't enough. So, for example, let's say you play the typical wizard elementalist like you have the damage types fire cold acid you can do every single one of those damage but usually it means like you have a this spell that do this thing mm -hmm. we went on a more uh, creative approach in which we say uh, well the character says I'd like to do this, for example. I'd like to try to uh, freeze part of the river so we create kind of a, a a bridge in between the two ends of it. And Master says, well, that would cost, let's say, uh, 20 points of power. Mm -hmm. And you just pay the points, and it happens. 
So more than getting a, a spell that would do this thing, we we go with the you have this ability. Use it just the way you are. It uh, it's a prize. It's a prize for the people that are creative with with magic. For example, and um, plus with with all this, we have different kinds of of wizards, which will allow for more or less uh, creativity. To be mm -hmm. to be fair, because for example, the elementalist controls the power of the of the elements, gets the gets some abilities. For example, as they can progress in the as, as they progress in that class, they will get the ability to either improve in the damage or the, ca the capacity of using fire damage, let's say, or being able to control more elements. An elementalist can control fire, uh, ice. Uh, like we, we made it so we can control the, the ground, wind, uh, dark and light. Mm -hmm. So you can either... Well, this this ma makes it so that you can either go all the way in one in one element and make it you would be the best fire wizard in the world mm -hmm. or you can be go in a in, in a different approach which which will allow you to dominate like let's say four five even seven the, the, all, all the all the types of of magic however they wouldn't be as a strong individually so everything you can do about it you can do it uh you are limited by the number of points it would cost you to do something as I said, if you want to freeze a breach in between the two ends of a river, that would cost you, let's say, twenty points of power. If you really, if you only want to like put an ice on on your cup of whiskey, you would be like, well, one point of of power if the DM is not a a fun DM. However, that's the elementalist. We go for when you go for an illusionist, for example, you can create an illusion or you can create manipulate the thoughts. We go, we went on the illusioner on a two-way part, to, to say the least, like a, du a, du a dual-headed monster, as you said in the beginning. More of a illusion is properly said, create illusions, make it as real as possible. And the way that illusion is that can uh, manipulate you, manipulate you in, in, ma in a magic way, not just like, oh, look, there's a, there's a dragon. They would create things, make you fear, the, the, this kind of wizard. And the one we have right now in the Kickstarter is the summoner, which will use is a different approach even from from this first two which you will uh, sign contracts with spirits in the spiritual world and they will uh, aid you in battle aid you in the social interactions aid you for example the in the in the hunting uh, department when you're trying to find it you can uh, try to summon the if you choose it you can try to summon the artisan which artisan is in the most uh, open way of the world which you would be able to Summon a, a hunter, summon uh, a jeweler, or what, whatever suits your needs in that moment. Mm -hmm. So basically, magic we made it so that every single class gets the way to apply magic, mm -hmm. just as they would. But the ha the extent to what it does is the only is the is the mind of the player. The way that he would just be able to. In in a way, break the break the game. Mm -hmm. And with that in, with that in mind, when it comes to when it comes to the bestiary, um, do you have a do you have a bestiary the the monster manual equivalent? Mm -hmm. You know the encounter the encounter. Ah, bestiary. List. Okay, so, sorry, I didn't understand you. Oh, do you have? Is it going to be a combination of so of sample monsters and advice and advice on how to create your own we were uh thinking more on the lines of having this uh, these monsters that you can put in the game like well the basic monster uh, bestiary of monster manual of of every single game like you can you they get like a challenge rating not as much as challenge rating because every single monster can be tweaked just a little bit and make it far more difficult because uh for example we have goblins mm -hmm. which are the usual type really squishy to just swing a sword strong enough at them and you just they just die so mm -hmm. but imagine you want to make a, a really powerful goblin this uh leader goblin you just you're able to create just like well put it a, a sword mm -hmm. 
a really good sword and added like 20 points of uh, 20 hp points it's like well you can do it uh if, if you want to but our idea was more on the lines of you have these monsters you can use them as you want and certainly with some some sort of uh create your own monster is more of a uh of an idea we had like if we if you pledged to us if you give us more a certain amount of money you can give us the idea of a monster and we will create it on the game mm -hmm. now with with that with all that in mind um what are you guys shooting for as far as a release window not a release date but a gen but a general approximation uh we we were trying like well we've been talking and uh if everything would work with go with blah, if everything would go uh, as we thought probably in december this year mm -hmm. would try would try to have everything the, the game is already it's already done like we have the almost everything the, the only the only thing that would take time from this is uh all the work that comes from making everything look good mm -hmm. Because as in terms of lore, in terms of um, actual monsters, in terms of in terms of uh, the classes, they are all already created. Mm -hmm. So we would just have the to have the time to create uh, to make it look good, have some artwork done, get the the book to be translated because right now it's all written in Spanish. Mm -hmm. I've translated most of the things you can see in the gigs. Kickstarter, but I am no expert. I speak English pretty well, but that's it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, with that in mind, we would I would say that definitely on December, let's say, uh, let's go like all the way and just say that, like January next year would be the like and would be like the most uh, the, the latest it would be. Mm -hmm. And I, I will certainly be looking forward to seeing. How, th how that develops. But with all that said, I would like to sincerely thank you f to for uh, taking the time out of your schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the bit of crazy that happens around here. Nah, it's a pleasure. It's a lot of pleasure for me to, well, to get to someone as far as you are. Like, it's, it's amazing that I'm even talking to someone yeah. from the United States just because they saw the project and they liked it. And... Anytime you guys see fit to return to the temple, whether it's to go f go further into Spirit's Ancient Tales or to laugh at whoever whoever was foolish enough to pick Malkavian, <laughs> the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. Definitely, definitely would love to would love that if we if you ever invite us, mm -hmm. you just, we will be there. Mm -hmm. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody!